Hi! Welcome back, everybody, to Depth Survive. Hope it's here. And this time we're covering an anime film that's considered a classic by people who've seen it, and one I've never seen before. In fact, I'd like to take some time to maybe take a look back at classics I missed over the years, like we did earlier this year with Gungrave and a few other titles. So, for this one, we are doing Royal Spoice. Spoils. Royal Space Force, The Wings of Hanimais. I was trying to say Hanimais in space at the same time. Um, and I probably butchered Hanimais as well. But, um, yeah, for those who don't know, this is a Gynex film all the way back from the 1980s that had an 800 million yen budget. And, yeah, what it was released in March of 1987 in Japan with the first airing of its English dub in February of 87. A full month before the Japanese release, technically. Though this first dub is not very great from what everyone says, it released under the name Star Quest, and very little footage of it has been found. And they Americanized all the names. For example, our main character, Shiro, is now named Randy. I heard the plot is also a bit different, but I'd like to see this dub surface at some point. I love looking into crazy stuff like this. Fast forward, though, into 1994, and Manga Entertainment, I don't think we've really talked about them much on here at all, would release a dub of their own in 1994 with a limited theater release, with the home video release coming in 1995. I saw some people say this was not Manga Entertainment's very first English dub. I'm not quite sure on that, and I'm also going to say probably not true, but I don't know. Someone will have to let me know on that. But, yeah. Interestingly enough, the UK's version of this release would remove a couple of scenes, which... Or remove a scene in particular. Those who've seen the movie know the scene. But, yeah, all future releases outside of the UK's VHS would be completely uncut. Including the most recent release, 4K Blu-ray Memorial Edition, which is how I experienced this. And if anyone's wondering, if you're a fan of this movie, I definitely pick up the set for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah. So what is Royal Space Force about? Royal Space Force takes place in a world kind of like ours. It's pseudo-steampunk, but also futuristic and shit. Um, and we take place in the kingdom of Hanimais, a, a kingdom that profits off the war economy, which screams like something out of Kojima's psyche. Our main character, Shiratsu Ladat, happens to have big dreams for the future. I'm going to call him Shiro for the rest of this uh, discussion, to keep it simple. That's what everyone in the movie calls him, too. That's what he prefers to be called. But, um, yeah. Stupid Resident Evil menu. Um, anyway. He, um, has big dreams for the future, but is unfortunately unable to get very far and is put in the Autonomous Royal Space Force. Not as a cool title as it sounds. Trust me on that. For... The country of Hanimais, or Kingdom of Hanimais, profiting only on the war economy. The Space Force is a bunch of bumbling fools, lazy people, and old scientists who are just trying their luck to get into space, I guess. Meanwhile, the government or Ministry of Defense are thinking, what the hell is the point of the Royal Space Force? They're not serving any military purpose. So, why do they exist? You also have resistance factions thinking, why are we wasting all this money and budget on the Space Force? when they could be spending it on starving citizens in the ghetto and all this other stuff. Shiro doesn't really have much purpose in the beginning. He's not even sure what he's doing until he runs across Ray Kenny. Ray Kenny, or Ray Kenny, however you pronounce that name, they go back and forth. She happens to be someone who's very religious and he finds that, I guess, fascinating or interesting. So wanting to find more purpose in his life, he and her become friends, basically. When he tells her his occupation, she seems very interested and says that going into space away from all of this, all of the war-torn world that we live in without any conflict must be something very beautiful out there. Thus, uh, you see where this is going. It inspires him to have a dream to get out into space because she more or less sets him on the right path. Anyway, that's the basic setup. There's other stuff, too. For example, he starts doubting himself when things don't exactly go as well. Um, when he 
applies to be the first man to go into space. They, the kingdom tries publicizing it and making a pseudo celebrity out of him to get people's mind off of the government wasting budget on the Royal Space Force, which kind of works at the beginning, but not as much. Couple that with people doing assassination attempts on Shiro, and he's going through a lot of shit. But by the end of it, I think he turns out into a, you know, stronger character because of all the shitty experiences. And if anyone's gonna bring up the scene, I'll get to it. Just, just wait. All right, I'm gonna do it at the very end. Cause I, do I think this is a movie people should see? Sure, go for it. I thought it was all right. My only issue. We're gonna get to it. First, the animation. Everyone says this one of the, I think the movie's very beautiful, etc. I can't tell that for obvious reasons, but there was a decent amount of training montages. Just like Rocky. Do, do, do. Um, as far as the music goes, it was interesting to say the least. Not bad, just interesting. Now, let's get to the dub itself and Oh boy, you could tell this is a dub from 1994. So it was dubbed by Studio Animes, the people behind Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star, with the ADR director being Kevin Seymour. Translation being, oh geez, Nobuhiro Yashi or Yoshi, um, Taru Yashida, Neil Nadaiman or Nadaman, Mary C. Mason, and Kevin Seymour himself. Holy shit. Why so many people? Now, as far as the script goes, eh, it's okay. There's a couple of major fuck-ups from what people are saying. I noticed one in particular, though. So, yeah. What the hell was that mean was a question asked in this dub. Yeah, not what the hell does that mean. It's was that mean. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was one. The mic quality is a little rough. A lot of times it sounds like they're eating their mic. It sounds like my mic, actually, where it sounds like shit. But again, that's to be expected with a dub this old, I guess, especially if this is an early manga entertainment dub. Some of the singing is dubbed, like when a character is singing to themselves, etc. But yeah. Now, let's get to our dub cast itself, and this is where the issue that I had with the movie arises, or arrives, there we go, going to talk. The, a lot of the characters aren't really that memorable in the Royal Space Force themselves. Oh, sure, you've got a couple. For example, Shiro, our main man here, he, I already mentioned, starts off very directionless, but by the end, finds his drive. Well... A lot of places list David A. Thomas, who's Gren from Cowboy Bebop, and Technoman Blade from Technoman, uh, voicing him. But then others list Robert Matthews on anime voiceover. I, I have so many questions. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. A couple of these are a little out there. Either way, whoever voiced Shiro, which I'm going to go with David A. Thomas because more places credit him. I think he did okay. Again, remember, guys, you got to go back to the time of 1994. Does it hold a candle to what we have with some of the later dubs? Probably not, but I think it sounded okay. After that, we have Ray Kenny, um, who's, again, the religious chick, who's some places credit as Heidi Linhart, who I couldn't find anything on. I couldn't find anything on Robert Matthews either, by the way. Or some places also credit her as Melody Lee, which is the alias of Patricia Yali, or Jolly, J-A-L-E-E, -E, who is Patricia from Lucky Star and Nataruma from Orga Zero Two. Do you see what I mean? So you have an al or a voice actor being credited under her alias, or it could be someone else entirely. Fortunately, the whole dub isn't like this. It's only these two. Yes, our two major main characters have this issue. fan fantastic. And again, I think both of them are okay. I don't really have any major complaints. It's just serviceable at best. Um, they do put emotion into it when they need to, I guess. 
Some of their performances, they range wildly all over the place. Some scenes, they sound fine. Others, they sound monotone and flat. Others, they overact. Again, it's what you'd expect from a dub this old. I, I can't stress that enough. As for our next character, we have Dr. Ganam, who's the one who was working on the um, rockets. He even calls all the uh, engines his kids, all of his experiments. So I thought he was kind of funny. He was fun. He's voiced by Michael Forrest, who's uh, Takeyuki from Blade of the Immortal, the 2009 version, and Kubota from Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. I think he had fun. He definitely had fun. And I, I, I don't know. He stood out to me. I, I liked him. After that, we have the pseudo best friend coon in the Royal Space Force, Marty. But the cast list credits him as Maddie, but everyone calls him Marty in the dub. I, I, whatever. He's voiced by Brian Cranston, Eddie from Armitage 3, Polymatrix, and Fei Long from the Street Fighter 2 movie, which definitely going to cover that soon. Trust me. Um, again, he's, he's typical smart ass fun dude. He's, he's fun, I guess. Or laid back. The last major character that I can really name from the Space Force side of things is General Caden, who really wants to get the rocket off the ground. Like, even doing very, very seedy things to get funding for the project, if you catch my drift. And, yeah, he's voiced by Steve Bowen, who's Daisuke from Lupin the Third Part 2, and Baron from Fist of the North Star, that old-ass dub from the... Yeah, late 80s, early 90s. I think he had a lot of fun. He's probably the voice actor I like the most in this, honestly, out of everyone we got, because he just seems like, like, ah. Uh, when uh, Shiro tries auditioning for the astronaut position, um, Kaden just goes, really? You're the only one? Anyone else? He just had, he has a dry sense of humor, basically. And I, I don't know. I love that. Remind you of anyone? The last major character to mention is Mana, who is a young orphan that Ray Kenny is taking care of. And yeah, Mana is voiced by Barbara Goodson, who you don't know is, do I need to say anything more than Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers? She's also Oreo from the old Higurashi dub. And Mana barely talks, so not really much to say, but it is nice to see Barbara Goodson here. As far as other standout voice actors that take a part in this, Dan Warren, Steve Blum, and Wendy Lee voice multiple characters. Yeah, even back in the early 90s, this was still a major fucking problem. So. Now. As far as the dub itself goes, before I wrap this up with the one scene and the script, because I can't say anything without spoilers, but the script change, if this is indeed accurate, is kind of fucked. Um, the dub is very, it's, you could tell it's a thing at a time. That's all I could say. Which I hate that statement. I genuinely do. Because it's like, oh, you can't tell that joke anymore. That's a statement of the time. Blah, blah. But in a sense, I say that stub, you can tell it's from 1994. That better? Um, I still think people should track this down and watch this movie. I had fun with it. Um, some of it gave me Top Gun vibes, honestly. I don't, I don't know why, but it, it did. Because, yeah, there are warring nations, but... They play a small part of it. They're not the main, main focus. The main focus is on Shiro and him wanting to achieve his dream and what he wants to do and developing as a character. So, yeah. I just wish we got more on the other members of the Royal Space Force because, again, the majority of them don't leave much of an impression at all. But I do like the world they created and I thought this was an overall okay film. I saw some people say this is their favorite film of all time. Um, others say it's terrible. I'm I'm directly in the middle. I will be decisively indecisive and say, I'm glad I watched it. I genuinely am. And yeah. So maybe you guys should give it a watch and let me know your thoughts on it if you haven't seen it already. Um, it's weird that the Blu-ray for it is locked to a limited edition as of right now. Hopefully they release a standard edition eventually. Eventually. But yeah. Anyway, spoiler time. So the scene in particular. <sighs> Those who've seen the movie know, but... It's when Shiro is going through a lot, and I mean a lot of shit. And he's at his breaking point, basically, after, you know, all the pressure is getting to him. And... 
Ray Kenny basically more or less friend zones him, so he tries making forced advances on her. Now, she does end up hitting him, and he does end up stopping when he realizes how far he's about to go, so there is that, and he does seem to deeply regret his actions, thankfully. But a lot of people feel this scene does feel out of place, and I can sort of get that as well. Um, what's really weird, though, is I saw some people say in the dub, when I was looking up what people were talking about, that the script was altered, and Rikenny almost seems like she's blaming herself for his advances on her and profusely apologizing for it and it makes it sound like she's the one at fault or you could go with the take that i saw other people have saying that maybe it's because she resorted to violence and she feels that's beneath her because of her religious rhetoric speaking of the religious rhetoric i saw some people say that it does feel a little weird i guess you know, with um, Shiro going into space and doing the whole saying a prayer for world peace over the thing to stop the warring faction beneath them or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it was um, done okay, I guess. But I'm coming from someone... It's coming from someone who I'm openly meant to be a Christian. So your mileage will vary on that. Um, but let me know. Curious. Now, as far as anything else with the movie, yeah, the scene in particular that I was referring to a minute ago that everyone's talking about, should it have been cut? Maybe. It was actually cut from the UK VHS version to get the rating down. That's the scene I mentioned before. But now all releases do have the scene. There was actually a sequel planned called Uru in Blue at Gynex, but it ended up being cancelled. And instead, we got Ava and on soon after, which couldn't be happier about that. I fucking love Ava. I guess that's really it, though. Um, I, I really had fun with this movie. So, right, it's a fun movie. Can't say it enough. Let me know your thoughts on Royal Space Force. As far as MVP at the dub, uh, I I don't know. It's, it's hard to do that with a dub like this, but I guess Steve Bowen as General Caden. I don't know. I, he just he had a lot of fun. Really enjoyed his performance. As far as what's next, don't know yet. We'll find out. So, till then, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have yourselves a fantastic day. And, yeah. Till next time, guys. Please, like, comment, and all that stuff. Let me know your thoughts on Royal Space Force. Maybe you hated the movie. Maybe you loved it. Let me know. Maybe you agree with me. Have a good day, guys. Thanks again for watching. Till next time.